two will do, and then um, we'll start with the uh, with the cream. First question: Where are you? Westmoreland, Shane. Linthwaite House Hotel. Where can we find you? Uh, on the Crook Road. Crook Road. Crook Road. Uh, phone S on Windermere. Okay. Open for evening meal. Yes, every every day, 365 days a year. Lunch, dinner, afternoon tea. How many sort of covers? A lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, we do about sort of 20, 30 for lunch at the moment, and um, it's about between 40 and 50 for dinner, depending on the different um, time of the year. You know, it goes up and goes down. So you split the vanilla pods. And from your accent, you're not from around here, are you? No, I'm from the beautiful south. From where? The beautiful south. Right. So I've, been, I've been transformed. Have a go. Have a go. Um, so two vanilla pods into uh, 500 grams of double cream, and then into that we're going to add. 50 grams of icing sugar. So pop that in and we'll just whisk it gently. We don't want to um, over whip the cream. So basically all we're trying to do is create uh, a nice velvet texture. We're not going to try and take it to a full peak, so a soft peak. That's all we're going to try and do to that. Only take a minute or two. What made you move north? Um, the job. I got a really good job. So it was just down tools where I was and, and come up here. And whereabouts um, were you? I worked for a guy called Alan Murchison uh, for about five years um, in the south in all of his restaurants um, and then I sort of came up to Linthwaite. I wanted to, I wanted to work in the north of England because I think that it's a nicer environment to be in. Or if you want to grow up, have a family and all that sort of stuff, it's a nicer place to be than the south in my opinion. Um, so it was, it was an easy choice really. When the, when the offer came up it was just, yeah, let's do it. And how long have you been up here now? Uh, about two and a half years. So yeah, it's going, it's going well. You are making a name for yourself. You're becoming quite a place to eat. No, you are. Oh. And, and, and to be fair, it, it, not because of your efforts, it's because of your efforts that you're doing that. Yeah. Oh, it's not just me. There's, there's about nine, ten guys working with me, and sort of four KPs as well. It's a, and a massive, massive front of house team as well. So it's all about like the the front and back working together to make the whole thing uh, a successful experience for everyone that's involved. You know. Who's your sort of favourite chef? Who would you aspire to? Um, at I mean, the moment, you work with Alan Murchison, who's yeah. very famous. Yeah, I, I, I really like Tom Carriage. Yeah, I think he's, he's very up-and-coming, isn't he? Yeah. He's done a fantastic amount of work with with sort of pub food and the more relaxed style of food as well. I think for me, I, I prefer to cook a more more relaxed style of food rather than gels and foams and liquid nitrogen and all that sort of stuff. That's not what we do. It's all about well cooked, well executed dishes that people can relate to as well. You know, we don't want to be blowing people away too much with. With odds and sods they can't appreciate. And of course damsons are in at the moment. Exactly, yeah. Bang on season. Yeah. Um, and the brambles came from, from Linthwaite. So we've got a nice little patch at the back of the garden that we can just go and nick them from. Without the owners finding out. <laughs> Listen, while we're on with this and you're sort of going through this dish, any questions? And I know you're... You are a, we're a bit weary, we're in here, but, we, but we love the fact that you're doing a great job. But just, if you miss something, just put your hand up and we'll... We'll quiz him because it's part of that interaction. We sort of use it as a workshop, asking the questions. We've just had the foraging one on, and most of them people have gone away with the magic mushroom ideas. So if it's something you're curious about, you don't mind us asking a question. No, no crack on. So with this, we're not going to whip it much further than that. We don't want it to be um, a stiff, like set cream. So when you when you're eating it out of the jar, you want it to be sort of a velvet texture. You don't want to have too much air in the cream, so that's why we use double cream, not whipping cream as well, as a higher fat content, so you can you can fold fruit into that quite easily. So we'll stop with that, and then we'll look at our brambles over oh, the uh, damsons, beg your pardon. So that's, as the water's coming up, we'll um, give it a little stir. So you've got a kilo of water, one and a half kilos of um, sugar in there, two vanilla pods, and then about 500 grams of brambles, uh, damsons, that's the one. And then we'll just put another, another 500 in there because we've got enough. So basically with the damsons, obviously everyone knows they are full of horrible nasty stones that will crack your teeth if you're not careful. So we don't want that. What we're going to do is just cook them gently and then pass them through the chinois. And what that will do, we're not going to use a fine one, one that's got little holes in so you can push out the fruit um, and leave the stones in here. Um, and then the liquid will form our compot. So, grass made gingerbread, um, while we're using that, for me, it's probably the best product that comes out of Cumbria. I think it's absolutely outstanding. It's a really versatile piece of 
piece of piece of food. You, know, you can use it in a dessert. You can have it with a cup of tea. Whatever you want to do, it is great. It comes in two different forms. We use a crumb, and we also sometimes use the biscuits as well. Um, it's, it's stunning, and it's a really nice, warm, spicy flavour. It's got a lot of heritage with obviously the spice trade, and uh, and Cumbrian food for me. So when I sort of came up here about a year and a half ago, I didn't really know anything about Cumbrian food. I've sort of learned over the last, I'd say, 12 months what is what is it and um, where are the roots for it, and that's what we're trying to achieve in Linfway. It is just local produce cooked well for local people and not, not messing around too much. That's the plan. There is a stand actually in the food hall, and you can get grassmere gingerbread with all them spicy things that came in White Haven Harbour. So, and the lady sat down in the front is the owner, so she's ready to go and serve you at high discount prices. Should we, oh, I should hope so. Yeah, we could do a bit of a deal on there, couldn't we? <laughs> No, so well, basically, it, you're absolutely right. Fantastic, Robin. You can see the damsons are starting to split open, and well, we're not too fussed about like what the fruit looks like. It's going to be mashed up, so it doesn't matter if we overcook. If you think you're overcooking it, it, it needs to be soft. Obviously, they won't go through the uh, the drum sieve or the shim while you've got straight away. So just cook them down a little bit. So the other thing we're going to add is um, our our brambles. Again, nice, right on season, and readily available to steal from any bush you decide to take them from and uh, they're lovely. So it's really really as easy as that. Three or four or five ingredients and that's it, job done. Just got to wait for these to cook. Anyone got any questions? Yeah with um, anybody never heard of Grasmere gingerbread? No, you're, you haven't? Get yourself in there and have a try because it is exceptional. It's interesting because we don't know the audience. There's some here from New Zealand earlier on, there was some from France yeah, and there was some from uh, Levens, so they haven't heard of it either, so really just getting that awareness factor out there. <laughs> Any questions on uh, Chris up to now? Anybody? Having a good show? Oh, there's a lady. Thank you, my dear. Just a second. Has he made up his recipes from the local produce? Sorry, say that again? Is it your recipe? These are the recipes that we're, um, we work on at work and we just sort of, we have a base recipe from, from a peach dish we've done previously this year and we'll, we'll turn it into the damson one and we'll, we'll make we we'll sort of develop them into the local ones as when we can so you sort of adapt something using use local products yeah exactly yeah. like yeah. we want to use the local stuff as much as we can we've but got damsons blackberries gingerbread and what about say, on the mains what have you got in local at the moment uh, on mains? venison at the moment we do a uh, leg of venison with um south sea red cabbage um and more brambles and uh yeah, it's really cool. Purple potatoes. Any Herdwick, anything like that? Any Herdwick, Herdwick lamp? We have to, we've currently got that one at the yeah. moment. Um, but that's coming off, being replaced by venison. So we just try not to use everything all the year round. Just vary it a little bit. So if you come to no, come every good. now and then, it's not um, it's not always on the same time. Anybody? Any more? Any questions? No, keep going. Yeah. And what about a sort of a meal? What does it cost? Very ish, cheap. ish. Very, very cheap. <laughs> Well, coming from the south, you might money. say that, but we're a bit harder up north. You know, <laughs> um, pay as well, you might recognise that. Actually. Obviously, we do like packages of dinner, bed, and breakfast and stuff like all room only, room only packages. If you, it's about fifty-two pounds for for dinner for three courses. We say three courses, but there's canapes, bread, soup, starter, main course. Dessert, have you got any of these like these Michelin star jobbies, or um, have you are you aspiring for something like that? It is something we'd aspire to achieve, but we're not going to change what we do. To, to achieve those sort of things, we've, we've got three rosettes, we've got five out of ten. And three three rosettes, yeah. yeah. So yeah. We're, we're comfortable with where we are um, and we'll keep going and you know, good things come to those who wait, you know, it's not it's not a race. It's not a race. So that you can see they're just starting to break up. You, if you can see in there, like, the colour from the damsons is bleeding into the syrup and that will make a stunning jelly. Obviously we haven't got time to make a jelly and set it today, but what we would do in the restaurant is pass the liquid off, keep any excess liquid and then you just make a jelly out of that and it'd be sort of 100 grams of liquid. So one leaf of gelatin, so you can set it to the bottom of the jars and you can play about and layer them up as nice as you want. You know, just lots and lots of colours, lots and lots of colours. So you can see they're starting to break up a little, we won't be very long. Yeah, I know it's a boring thing waiting for a pan to boil, but... <laughs> um, what about today? Have you all had a good show? Enjoyed it? Tremendous weather, haven't we? I mean, we're very, very proud of what's put on here. There's a lot of effort goes into it. The second Thursday in September. Um, as we said earlier, this is when... You know, many years after they, not many years after they discovered Australia, farmers in the area were comparing their livestock. And I have to say, we're very proud that we've got this show where it is today. And the food hall, you must support local people. Uh, what's interesting as well, we brought in pigs about six years ago. So we didn't have pigs, it was not something that was popular in the area. Maybe if it had been, we might not have lost the Cumberland pig, the dear old pig that became extinct. 
Um, some of the breeds over there are quite rare. In fact, if I was to tell you that the middle white pigs in the marquee over there are rarer than the giant pandas, it makes you realise that slippery slope, that if you don't eat them, we as farmers don't keep them. So I hope you do enjoy the rest of the show, and we've had a tremendous day. Um, the next demonstration will come along at about, is it quarter two? What time are you on for? Yeah, quarter two. And then we've finally got our high, high line act again, Phil Vickery. He was on at 12. Uh, he really enjoys the show. This is the second year he's come. Unfortunately, there's no royalty here for him this year. I think he's a bit disappointed. Uh, four o'clock for Phil Vickery, and then that just about winds us all up for the show. But I really do hope you've all enjoyed it. Any highlights? Anybody sort of say, well, that was good. Go on, put your hand up. What was your highlight of the show? Anybody? Just the show. Oh, easy. Yes, absolutely. The weather. <laughs> well, it's been organised. It took a bit of praying for, but we got it, you know. So you see, what I've done is I've just passed off some of the, brand, uh, the damsons so you can see they've, they've all broken up and we can start pushing them through the sieve. And once you've got as much food as you can, you'll end up with a, a, a more of a pulpy liquid at the bottom. So once you've got your pulp and you've pushed it all through, you can hang it in a cloth if you want overnight or however you want to do this. It's just easier for me to, to show you that you can use damsons quite easily. They're not anything to be, anything to be scared of. So just push it through. And once you've pushed all that through, you'll end up with a compote. Um, taste it, taste it, taste it, make sure it's not got uh, too much acidity. And into our compote, we're going to add about 50 grams of um, brambles. So they can go into there. We'll get a little marisa, we'll fold that in. And then what we'll do is we'll start building the, um, the full. Is that politically correct now? I mean, we would have called them blackberries. Is that not allowed now? Brambles. Brambles. What would you call them? Brambles well, they sound nice, doesn't they? Blackberries. Blackberries. See, brambles must be a southern That north-south divide, isn't it, again? <laughs> Trust me, I'm right. Thinking brambles. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's... Tear your pants on, brambles, yeah. Right. So... <laughs> blackberries, all right. <laughs> we'll put a couple of, um, couple of spoons of the... Uh, blackberry and damson That's it. compote into there, into the bottom of that. Like I said, in the restaurant we'll put something like this on and we'll have a jelly at the bottom of it. We'll have Just checking it was the new related. law from London, you know, <laughs> that we haven't got round to finding out about. <laughs> oh, I'm saying nothing there. Nice. <laughs> so, we've got our cream. You can see that it's, it's already started to set up a little bit, but it's not, it's nice and loose. So when you put it in there, you're going to have to eat it with the spoon and you're not going to have to cut through it with a knife or anything stupid like that. So, take your... Um, your compote mix and we'll add some of the uh, the grass made gingerbread crumbs to that as well just to give it a nice bit of uh, texture in the bottom so about a third of the amount of gingerbread to the compote that we have so that tightens it all up already and then we're just going to put this into here get it all in and then what we don't want to do now is um, we don't want to whip the cream anymore so what we want to do is just fold it in gently and you can see that the nice colours are starting to come through and you have little pockets of uh, blackberries in with your damson compot. We're getting there, we're learning yeah, it, aren't yeah, we? I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning. learning. <laughs> so just pour this into a piping bag. And the whole, the whole idea of this dessert for me is, is layers and layers and layers, so it's about creating a, a different experience each time you dive into it and that's that's what we want to do so just take your parking bag give it a little shake I did have a little knife somewhere okay so just, just cut the end off so we've got our little corner jars you can get these anywhere anywhere these days um, even supermarkets sell them so gingerbread on the top and you're just gonna, what you're trying to do is just get it to fill the edges so that when you when you serve them you can see what you've got in, inside the folds. So you can see the different layers it's a bit more appealing to the eye rather than just a big pile take your mix and then just cut the hole a bit bigger cut the mix and then just pipe it in and just go go again uh, around the edge, around the edge. There we go. Take a bit more of your compote, just the raw, the, the normal compote, no, without the blackberries in it, and then just pop that in the middle. Well, 
and then we'll just top that off. Are you right, Chris? Yeah, yeah, I'm good to go. Finish it off, a little bit of a gingerbread on the top. And some more of your blackberries. And this this is something you could do, and it is really has not taken me very long to make this. You can make these have them the day before, if you're doing a dinner party or something like that, or you want to do for friends, have it in the fridge, it will last a good day in there. So that's that's it. Damson, blackberry and grass made gingerbread full, done. Chris promoting it, doing it, using local. Thank you very much for giving up the time. Remember Linthwaite House Hotel on the Crook Road to Windermere. And again, big round of applause. He's given his time up for us. You've enjoyed it, you've been entertained, relaxed. And we'll be shortly turning around for another class act. Thank you again. Thanks for, thanks for coming.